I want to talk a little on tissue identification. Um, how am I doing with time, Steve? Am I okay? Okay. Um, I'm probably about halfway through. So what I want you to do is just recall what's happening to the sound. Um, in one of my earlier slides, I said that it could pass through or it could scatter away the sound waves, um, or it could get absorbed. If that's happening, if the sound waves are passing through or they're scattered or they're absorbed, they're never making it back to the transducer. And if they don't make it back to the transducer, then it's dark, right? So then the structure you're looking at is dark. If the sound returns to the transducer, then it's bright because you get a signal. Everything in between is a shade of gray. So as I mentioned, dark relative to other structures on the screen, I'm introducing a new term here, is called hypoechoic. Hypoechoic is dark, which means that hyperechoic is bright. But you use the term to describe things that are relative to other structures on your screen or in your, in your field of view. Isoechoic is equal echogenicity to other structures on the screen. And anechoic is black. I'm saying it like this, and I'm being methodical about this, because we're going to throw the terms around like crazy later. We're going to be saying, oh, that's hyperechoic to this, and that's hypoechoic to that. But if you have it down pat, you know hypoechoic is dark relative to other structures, and hyperechoic is bright, you're going to know it. But I do want to emphasize that this is in relation to other structures within the field of view. And that's the only way you can really describe it. For instance, normal tendon will be relatively hyperechoic to muscle, which is relatively dark, which we looked at a couple slides ago. And if you know, these, these terms could be abused a little bit because here, again, is that cross-section of the nerve in the forearm. This was that median nerve in the forearm again. And you see how it's bright compared to the muscle around it? So this little triangle of muscle is darker compared to the nerve, right? And here's the same nerve in the same forearm, just a little further distal. And you see how it's dark compared to the other structures around it? Well, nothing happened to the nerve. The nerve didn't all of a sudden become pathologic. It didn't become severed or, or hypertrophic or, or anything else. What happened was the structures that are associated with it, the structures that are adjacent to it, are darker or brighter. So I would describe this nerve on the top of the screen in the forearm as being relatively hyperechoic to the muscle that's next to it. And I would describe this nerve on the bottom part of the screen as being relatively hypoechoic as the structures that are adjacent to it. The key there is that I'm not describing the nerve as being hyperechoic in the forearm compared to hypoechoic in the wrist. I'm describing the nerve in relation to other structures in the field of view as it pertains to that particular area. <laughs> 